We are thrilled that you can join us this evening for this important conversation. My name is Randy Zucker, and I am the Interim Film Festival Director of the New Jersey Jewish Film Festival. On behalf of the film co-chairs, Joni Cohn, Andrea Bergman, Abby Meth Cantor, and the festival founders, Karen and Herbert Ford. Hi, Abby. Hello. It is my pleasure to welcome you tonight. A huge thank you and also goes to our amazing film curator, Miss Vicki Jacobs, who is also with us tonight. Um, and we thank you, could not do this without you. And thank you for helping us with this outstanding lineup of works for this season. We are so grateful to all of our festival sponsors and especially this evening to the sponsors of Man in the Basement, which um, is the film topic for this evening, Sarah Ann and Robert Sanders. And a thank you to our community partners for Man in the Basement, which is the JCC of Central New Jersey and the Central Jersey Jewish Film Festival which I am also a part of. So, so happy wearing two hats tonight. Um, we cannot do this without our sponsor support. We're so grateful. Um, you all keep this festival going and growing. Please note that we will be recording tonight's program. As I mentioned, I'm just going to put everyone on mute so we don't have ambient noise. Um, we encourage lots of questions, so please feel free to put them in the chat, and um, we also can um, unmute at the end if you want to ask uh, questions live. So now, I am pleased to introduce artist, educator, and filmmaker Gerard Amsalem, an American and French citizen whose interests lie in classic, foreign, and independent films from all over the world. Gerard moved to the US after spending his first 25 years in Paris. He studied painting at the University of Paris and earned a master's degree in French literature and art history while living in France. Gerard continued his studies in the US at the New York University Tisch School of the Arts. Gerard currently runs a series of classic and foreign film cl uh, series in the Cine Village in the SOPAC in South Orange, New Jersey. Um, details and the schedule of this really um, interesting class can be found at his website, newwaveproductions.org. Um, I have a lot more to say, but instead of you all listening to me tell you about Gerard, I invite Gerard, welcome, and please, I'm going to spotlight you, and I am so happy that you're with us. Um, you are the perfect person to be speaking on this subject uh, that and the themes that were discussed in The Man in the Basement, namely anti-Semitism and, um, and Holocaust denial, uh, specifically in Paris, which I think you're familiar with. So um, if you could start us off, just tell us um, a little bit about yourself what, and um, before we get into the question or anything else. Yes. All right, so let me tell you where I am coming from, where I was born. What is my experience to be Jewish because it has been all my life. So I was born in Morocco. First of all, I'm a Sephardic Jewish man. Um, in Morocco in the late 1950s, where my father was a teacher. And uh, from there, we went to Algeria, where my family is from. My family is from Algeria. So we have 300 years of being in Algeria. We went to Morocco for a little while. It's where I was born. So people say, I'm a Moroccan Jew. I am really not. I'm more an Algerian Jew. And um, in 1962, 
as we were living a very good life in Algeria. I don't know if you know the, the Jewish community in Algeria. My father and my mother were very well established in Tlemcen, who is like the north of uh, Algeria, not too far away from the Moroccan border. They had uh, many, many years of uh, decent, uh, of course, problem with, uh, with, with the Arabs, but it was not as much than we think it was. They were integrated in the society. Uh, they were respected. They were doing everything that they had to do. Even so, in the history, they were up and down, but they were very happy and they built their centuries of uh, being integrated in, in Algeria. In 1962, something happened that the French decided to let Algeria to the Algerian and the Algerian got your independence. We had citizenship because being Jewish, it's a kind of history interesting that in 1870, as the French come, they were looking for a group of people who could make like the transition or the connection between the Arabs and the French. And of course, they found the Jews were there in their own community, extremely well educated. And they say, well, we're going to use the Jews as, you know, communicator. And the Jews uh, were all in the position of uh, civil servants. They were teachers. They were uh, working in the town hall. And they got the citizenship in 1817 or 1850 by a uh, name called Crémieux. So they had the French citizenship. So in 1962, when uh, they asked, the French people to live, we had to live, you know, there was no choice. And that, at that time, I was very little. So the pressure of the Algerian on us, starting now, starting then, they wanted to get out. So we, I already felt as a little boy, like five years old, you know, taking the boat with leaving everything. So I saw my parents, and this is obviously because we were Jewish and we were French, and we had to go to France. So at five years old, I uh, immigrated in, in France because my father was a teacher. He got a job there and they put him in uh, the east of Paris. But half an hour, they gave him a job. And uh, this was like the countryside. There was no Jews there. Absolutely no. There was like maybe six or seven family of Jews in the whole neighborhood. And as a little boy, five years old, six years old, I was already, uh, I felt it. I felt that there was something I was different. I was not like everyone else because my father used to say, well, tomorrow is Yom Kippur, so we can't say anything. This was in, we're talking about the early 60s. And just to show you the climate of what is really anti-Semitism in this, because we're talking about the grind, you know, like the death of like uh, French people who really never liked the Jews because of the Catholic history and all this. So I used to say, my father used to say, let me write you a note for the for the schools that you are sick. We were never saying, as a young kid, I was never saying, I could not say, I am not going to school because I am Jewish. But he used to tell me, he said, you know, today is Yom Kippur. If you look around, every store is closed. Every people who's not going to work, they are Jewish. So we knew who was Jewish, not because we asked them. It's by deduction of what right. they were doing. So imagine this for, imagine at six years old, how do you feel? You say, what am I? Am I like, so what am I? I didn't do anything. I'm a little kid. And this is what I grew up. So I want to show, I want to just establish the fact that anti-Semitism is not, it's something that was ingrained and just mm -hmm. on me from the beginning of my life. And as I grew up, obviously, I went to Paris. I went to go to school in Paris. And in about 20 years old, I decided to go to Israel. I went to Israel and I started to really connect with my Jewish identity a little bit more because my parents were not really, they wanted to be more like, let's not talk too much about what it is to be Jewish. And when I went to Israel, I had another issue because I was a Sephardi Jew. And I don't know if uh -huh. you know the Israel of the 1980s, if you were a Sephardi Jew, was not so great, you know? <laughs> and then just to tell you, you know, in one time you have anti-Semitic, but you go to the place, you see it's, it's your place, and people right. say, oh, you have a Sephardic name. Is this a Moroccan name? Because I have a Moroccan name. Amsterdam is a Moroccan name. So they say, well, you know, if you're going to see, look for an apartment, and this is 1980s, you should have somebody else renting the up. You're going to have problems. I said, what do you mean I have a problem? Because I was French, so I had like more a European Ashkenazi way of looking. I was not coming right. from the map, and you know, I was very well right. But already there, there was another kind of, um, kind of not anti-Semitism, but in one way, being between Jews, there was already something. And after, you know, obviously I came here, and I, when I came here, it was like, you know, the greatest things that could happen to me. 
because I look around, it was just Jews around <laughs> everywhere. You know, imagine in this area, it was like so many. The menorah was out there, school were close from Yom Kippur. Uh, it was like an extraordinary experience. And of course, as I go back, just to give you an idea, as I go back to France all the time, I saw the picture of France changing, not just in extreme, I, it changed it because of political situation, because of, of Israel and Palestine changed a lot because remember as being Jewish, you're not just Jewish, you are connected with Israel. So there is all this kind of like, gray area or like more not really so clear what coming in, you know? And um, I was saying to Randy today, you know, that today I think the most unbelievable thing in the history of France is that the extreme right party was for a long time uh, run by Le Pen as another opponent who might win. His name is Eric Zemmour and he's Jewish. He's the head of the extreme right party in France. So I say, what is this? What's going on? You know, so now anti-Semitism, I mean, extreme right are obviously anti-Semitic, but to have somebody who is a leader of extreme right, who is going to have people voted for him, who are anti-Semitic, they're going to vote for a Jewish man who carry some kind of ideas like this. So when, when we talk about it, I wanted to have like this kind of uh, introduction who is very kind of coming from everywhere on every side. And it's not so simple because it's the whole picture is changing all the time and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes a big difference. Another thing I want to add too, uh, who is super important, is like all depends where economically you are too. You know, where are you in the economical spectrum as a Jewish person? If you are very wealthy and you live in a good part of Paris, you're not going to encounter the same thing that if you live in little Jerusalem, who is near the Arab part of Paris or in the bad suburbs. So there is a lot of, of this element, economical factors, uh, political factors, um, you know, Israeli factors, what your position is, right or left. Right. All of this makes a, makes, makes, a, makes a picture of what it is to be Jewish in France today. Do you think that there was a, a point of change in time or that the, mm, yeah. uh, or that this gradually um, just happened over time based yeah. on who was in office and mm -hmm. what the political climate was in Israel. Uh, anyway, we know that France is one of the most anti-Semitic country in the world. We know that. And not because of their action, it's because the, the Catholic Church, the ingrained, you know, like uh, brainwash of, of people in France is like up to 1940s. People were taught in school, it changed it after World War II a, a little bit, but it was taught that the Jews killed Christ, you know, that, and you know that this is the base of everything. So, and Catholic, France is a very Catholic country. So this is ingrained in it. I think it changed a lot with the creation of Israel. I think it, Israel became such a, a, a big part on the left and on the right. And at one time, you know, when he came in, when De Gaulle was in power, he had this in and out with Israel, but it was still like, these guys just built a country to the point that when Israel turned, and it will happen, when Israel turned and the Palestinian becomes a poor guy of this, and this is not even a political statement, it's what people saw it, then they saw the Jews, they saw the Israelis as invaders, they saw the Israelis are taking the thing from the Palestinian, and then we're talking anti-Semitism is going up this way, very strongly. So all the left part of a political party in France who were supportive of Israel, suddenly look at Israel of being like the invader, and this, everybody can say whatever they want, but it becomes this, and this equal Jewish. As Israel and being Jewish, I mean, of course they are connected, but they are still, you know, two entities. You know, you can be Jewish and not believe in the government of Israel, whatever you do. But for people in France, it's connected. If Israel does this, the Jews do that. And that starting to reinforce anti-Semitism very much. And how... How long have you lived in the U.S.? 40 years. But I've been so, going uh, back and forth once or twice a year on a regular basis. So it's... Um, no, I'm just curious about uh, comparison uh, of uh, the, the climate and, uh, um, and the, yeah. you know, why... I mean, I, I know it's not... In, it's ingrained and instilled, uh -huh. um, you know, in, from 
in France. So we don't come at it at the same place. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, we've had recent in our own, you know, local communities, anti-Semitic mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. acts in, yeah. in yeah. local high schools and, mm -hmm. and yeah. around synagogues. So yeah. no, it's, it's there too, you know, you know, I, uh, I was married in uh, in the Copernic synagogue, who was uh, the synagogue with an attack, you know, in uh, in the Latin 80s. So there is still a problem all over. But it's still, again, I want to make a, a point of at where are you economically? My sister, that uh, is my dear sister, lives in, in a very good part of Paris. She lives near uh, Avenue Vagram, who is like the center near the Champs Elysees. Um, there is well established Jewish community there. There is a great shul. They are protected. They have like protection somehow, and they don't feel it the same. But if you say, I think, if you go where I grew up, with like right. outside of Paris, and if you are at the middle of a Arab community who feel that the Jews have been taking things from them, then you're going to have problem. That's going to be more obvious. So the problem are there, but it all depends of where in the spectrum you can be. It's still there, but it's not going to affect your life the same way. It's not going to affect your life the same way. You know, I mean, le, let's look at the TV, the French TV, uh, you know, uh, main people are most of them Jewish. So you have this coming back all the time. The Jews control the media, the Jews right. control the bank. We have this too, you know, so this rhetoric did not stop. The only point with a big difference is like he has been a big immigration of Jews going to Israel because of what happened. And, you know, I was there in 2015. I don't know if you remember in 2015, you know, there was an attempt, you know, against uh, the butcher and uh, there was an attempt against Charlie Hebdo and all this thing. And it was a lot of, you know, problem. And then there was going to be a big wave of um, Jewish people going to Israel. But most of these people and all the connection with Israel, or oh, they were like, you know, connected somehow. Secular Jews who are well established in, in, in France don't go so far to Israel. They don't. Right. Honestly. And are they, would you say, um, and then Vicky has a question, but sure. would you say um, where you grew up in, and mm -hmm. in the areas that are not as affluent and mm -hmm. um, economically mm -hmm. uh, prosperous, that there are openly pro um openly practicing um yeah. jewish families yeah, and... sure, absolutely absolutely if you go to sarcel who is like a little bit north of paris where there is a lot of uh, you know practicing jews who are wearing kippot and this they're on the street they have like uh, it's not such an easy because they are surrounded by immigrants uh, from from Algerian and from Arab countries who are still looking at the Jews being the one who took things from them or being going to Israel and uh, all this hate is still coming up always, you know, because let's not forget the Jewish community, even in a poor area, is still a community. So they hold up with each other, they really are, you know, living their life, not asking anything to anyone. But there is this aid who is like, soon that you touch it, it comes back up. It's very easy. Uh, I mean, in my life, a lot of time, when I say to people, I am Jewish, as, I, as I, I am French, you know, they will tell me, so when are you going back to your own country? People have been telling me this. I say, what, what country? This is my country. They say, it's not Israel, your country? So, and Israel, I never went to Israel before, you know, this was in my teens. So there is all this idea, if you are Jewish, you really don't, it's hard for me to say that you don't belong, but you are not really a part of this culture. You're coming from somewhere else. And then directly, this is touching all things that are coming up, you know, so you're touching, uh, how come you're doing so well? How come were you educated? Where did you get this money from? And all this kind of old stereotype were coming. But I think a lot has to do with, with the political um, you know, situation of Israel. I think a lot has to do with this. You know, so. Is there a, um, in, in French schools, when they uh, do European French and you know, history, um, is there Holocaust education? Sure, sure. We have to. Even better than here, I can tell you one thing. We have to. We have to watch the movie of Alain René with Night and Fog, and I watch it. Night and Fog is the most extraordinary and raw film about the Holocaust. So you Night and Fog? Night and Fog. It's 12 minutes film, 12 or 15 minutes of a black and white film about the Holocaust camp. And I tell you, you watch this, 
you remember because it's not Spielberg. It's not telling you a story. <laughs> it's like cadaver of people at the open of like the, the camp. Alain René is like one of the most unbelievable film. So this is, a, this is a requirement for French school. So people see this. Of course, you have people who deny the Holocaust, you know, you have them everywhere. And uh, in the men in the basement, these guys, you know, there is people like this. But I don't want you to think that there is, there is people like this all the time, but they are going more into their, their little TV or their little internet. And internet is really too. But the problem is a lot of things are online. Who are going to certainly like the, the point that I liked really in the film is like how this point affected a 16 year old. Right. Because that you can be affected if somebody is that it's very tender age. So education is important. Reinforcing things are important. And I think the government does their job. But there is things who are so much ingrained that whenever you touch a button, it comes back up. You know, you are uh, you can be a nice guy. And soon that something happens, you can be a dirty Jew very fast. But I think, you know what, I'm not saying here we are very, it's, it's exceptional where we are in this area. But let's go to Alabama or Georgia. or like right. They never saw, I have a friend of mine who went to school in, I don't know, to Georgia. And she said, a roommate never saw a Jewish person of their life. You know, I mean, so it's kind of like, where are you in the density? Oof. How educated you are? What do you know about it? So there is a lot of factors. But we are the first scapegoat, always. Because people, I think, cannot put us, cannot grab us. They cannot grab us because we are in all different aspects of society, most of very well integrated and, you know, doing great and giving back so much to the world, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for them to understand what is this? Is this a religion? And I, I, one thing I say all the time, I say, I'm not really, really I'm not religious. Meaning I go to the shul sometimes. Religion is not my thing, but I am strongly Jewish. And then they don't understand. They say, is Jewish a religion? I say, no, no, no. It's more than that. So that is already something we destabilize people. And when they are destabilized, the only way to catch you is to grab you physically or to destroy you or to get you. And uh, I say, I mean, I, I, I can, you know, people say all the time, what do you like, France or the U.S.? They say, I am very thankful I come in this country for a lot of different things. But this is one of the things, to be able to be, you know, who I am and having uh, in a classroom 30% of kids who are Jewish. So uh, it's kind of uh, extraordinary was my past. So where I'm coming from, so. All right, all right. right. So interesting. Um, we have a couple of cu- questions sure, coming in, sure, but um, sure. Mickey, um, you want to ask your first question? Um, can you tell from the film mm-hmm. what neighborhood do the family in the film live? Is it even a pretty decent uh, arrondissement? I don't know exactly where, but uh, it looks like a very well established place, you know. And, but I the think- idea of like, you know, somebody selling a, a basement, and it, I know it's based on the true story, uh, it's kind of uh, interesting, you know. I'm not saying that it's not, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not really questioning this, but they, they were very well established people, well established. Right. So, certainly in a decent neighborhood. Um, I don't, and again, it's something who happened. So does it happen often? Or the, I don't know. I cannot tell you. But I know I can really refer to what, where my family is living and in what part of Paris they are living. Hmm. They know, I mean, they all will tell you, you know, they are anti-Semitic everywhere, but they don't have this kind of uh, one approach. The 17 arrondissement with, uh, you know, there is more Jewish community being there and there is people praying and everything else. So, um, it's, uh, it's well protected, well protected but, by- Yeah, so you would say this is, uh, mm. you know, a normal middle-class yeah. um, neighborhood. Yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, again, you know, I lived most of my life in Paris. I never had, you know, me, I'm talking about my, my own experience. Mm. And, knowing, and I, am, I am absolutely clearly Jewish for any French person because my name is a Jewish name. Like if you say, uh, I don't know, uh, your name is Italian. My name, Amsterdam, is a Jewish name and everybody recognizes it. Um, I had a lot of form of anti-Semitism on me, you know, in all different ways, but never really physically. 
I never had a, a physical attack against me or anything like this. And um, and you're talking about big cities too. You're talking people with 10 million people, Paris. You go in the subway in Paris, there is so many different people. I think a lot of this to do. If you separate us or any kind of minority and you put them in a place where you are very a minority and people don't know anything about you, you have more trouble. I don't see that. I don't say that he has not trouble in big cities less. Look at New York City. So would you say that um, other minorities then face the same scrutiny in uh, in France? Sure, sure. Being an Arab in France, I can tell you it's not an easy thing. Being an Arab is like, I'm not saying it's a worse certainly because you are most of the times the Arab population who come from Morocco and Algeria, speak French, some of them are very well educated. They are recognized and the French people are very racist. Mm. France is from the beginning a homogeneous society. You are French by generation. So if you go to Brittany, the extreme right party, a lot from Brittany, generation and generation being French. So everybody who is a foreigner is a foreigner. So it can be an Arab, it can be rich, it can be anything, it's still an Arab. And being Jewish too, to a certain extent, you are mm-hmm. a foreigner. So whatever you are not complying with the masses, if you are in a place where uh, it's a very non-well-educated, you might have problems directly or indirectly going to look for a job. I have some people of my family indirectly from a mother's side where to change their name to find a job at one time when they came from yeah. Algeria. Because uh, I'm Salam Lukla, it sounds like an Arabic name. So they say, what are you going to do with this? So my, my family had a very beautiful name called Ben Sadun. Ben Sadun is a beautiful name. It's Fils de, de Sadun, son of Sadun. It's a gorgeous Jewish name. They say, well, what we're going to do, we're going to take the Ben out because it's too Arabic. So now their name was Sadun. And Sadun is more Arabic. So whatever they <laughs> did, they could not really find a way to get out of this. It's, yeah. it's, uh, so look at how, how I think how painful it is to have to change your name, to be able to look for a job. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, well, and for the Arabs, it's the same. The Arabs are suffering a lot of that. But again, they're not a minority. Jews are really, really a minority because there is between 500,000 to 600,000 Jews. It's one person of the population. Let's not forget. The Arabs and uh, immigrants are 10% of the population. So we are a very, very small percent of people living in France. So if you are a small percent, and it's not always obvious, you know, that who you are, you know, the idea of like the Jews are snake, Jews go everywhere, they find a way to get to the government and to the media, always come back. But how can you explain that a Jewish guy is a head of the super, I mean, it's a, it's a I'm not saying it's a Nazi That's party. Crazy. Ultra, ultra conservative. And you should really, uh, you know, Google him. His name is Eric Zemmour. He's 58 years old. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he was born in Paris from uh, an Algerian family coming from Algeria in the early 50s. So very Jewish, going to the shore. But he represents the ultra, ultra conservative Paris people who obviously, Aid the Arabs, you know, they hate the Arabs, they hate the foreigner, but he is a foreigner for them. So that's, that's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So along the the Arab um, topic, mm-hmm. we have a question um, from Abby. Are right wing Holocaust deniers making inroads into the already anti-Israel slash Jewish mm-hmm. Arab communities to make common cause? And what efforts are there to counter these activities? I mean, the, the most you're going to see, it's online. Online, you know, online is like the source of all the news. So that they will cut that. They will just try to manipulate and just try to stop it. But it's very hard because there is, it's a, I mean, I'm not saying it's the same. The idea of like this digital media being so open, brings so much fake news and so much factors that you're going to influence people. But I, I say, well, like I said before, it's more on young people. So I think even if, the Holocaust uh, study are strong. I mean, they're strong in France. They should be stronger. That is what I think. I think they should really do a lot of more on Holocaust survivor, on Holocaust, you know, people talking about what it is or what it was. They do, but not enough. And remember one thing, as you know, there was attempt 
against teacher from Arab extremists, you know, uh, you know, really killed one, one teacher. So um, there is a lot of animosity there. The Holocaust survivors are coming through these people to the extreme of this Arab, um, you know, uh, this Arab things, and you can see them coming. Seeing so many people, intellectual, who are, are you know, like Holocaust denial, there is, but they are online. There is online. They will not be allowed to speak in public. Remember one thing: France has a very strong laws too. Here we can a very what law? The, the law of protest. Oh, the law. You can hear. You That's on the next your, question. Yeah, yeah. Like here, here you can you can protest if you are a Nazi party. You can, right? You know, by democracy in France, you can't. So there is certain laws who are very strict to protect the democratic idea of France. But um, again, how much can we do? How much can uh, right? You know, I think education is the key of everything. Me being a teacher, I tell you, education is the key of everything in everything. If you bring real people talking to you, and I do this to myself, I go often to conference on the Holocaust where I listen to people talking about their experience. You cannot, you cannot deny what these people are saying. So more you show on that. More you, we have still like the great document of Spielberg who taped a lot of these people and I think it's extraordinary. Right. Uh, but seeing them in Rio talking about this, I mean, I, I work in Livingston High School. So I mean, imagine, you know, so we have a lot of, of these people coming in and sharing it. But imagine like a small little town in the South of France when there is no Jews. Yes, to be, they have to be exposed. They have to see it and they have to be, you know, educated. No, so. Well, side note, um, speaking of the Spielberg um, videos, I just saw mm -hmm. um, this weekend that there's a company um, that are recording um, Holocaust survivors telling their stories mm -hmm. and converting it to AI so oh, that they sick. can yeah. um, live yeah. in holograms yeah. and yeah. be yeah. exhibits in museums and, yeah. and be mm -hmm. interacting where yeah. they yeah. Ask, are asked a question and answer it. Yeah. Um, it was really yeah. fascinating. But uh, the problem is not us because in New Jersey, I mean, really, <laughs> we, we are not the problem. You know, you, you have a ton of this. It's a place where we move, where people who are far away in their own world. I mean, even in this country, you know, we have, we know, you know, that the, all the Midwest is full of people who have absolutely no knowledge. And it's in this place you find more of the people we questioning what you're saying, you know. So the extreme right, the more conservative are coming from all these places, you know. And of it's course, true, you know, but I it mean, can uh, still happen in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not saying the opposite. It can, and he certainly is. But it cannot yeah. be coming up so easy because there is so many Jews around, you know. I mean, right. uh, again, I think that uh, geographically it's an issue, uh, but whenever the ground is there, it comes yeah. up. When the ground is there, you begin show it comes up, and it comes up even from the people you know, not just the people you don't know, people you think who know you, people who think that uh, they understand who you are it will come up. Or like, okay, you save money, so you are a Jewish person because you save money more than anyone else, or, or you are more ambitious, or whatever it is, all these stereotypes, they come right up. Um, so that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot to do. So with. speaking of uh, laws, mm -hmm. um, Ruth uh, writes, France seems to be a country of laws, even though the judicial wheels move very slowly, is there some way that non-Jews can use the law to take away property repatriated to the Jews after the Holocaust? I really don't think so. I think that is maybe some few cases, but it's not. There is still a very strong laws about it. And I know a lot of people who went back, even I have a friend of mine who asked me to go back and to look for who was the people who owned their house of their grandparents and I had to go. So there is a lot of thing of protection of right. I don't think it's so easy. I think it must be cases. I'm not saying it's not cases, you know, I'm not like uh, knowing everything, but um, right. I don't think it's so easy because still France, and I'm going to do something which is really rarely for me to do something very positive about it. It's <laughs> a country of rights. It's a country who took people from all over the world. It, you know, even the Jews, you know, all the, all the people who came from Russia and Poland and established themselves, they were all the time protecting from them in a certain level. But in the same time, 
you have the rest. In the same time, you have everything. So, um, you know, they were like very all the way up on uh, protecting people, you know, somehow and taking people from all over the world. Uh, so, so, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, I don't want to say it's a mixed bag. Of course, we know that it's there, but you know, it depends what you're living, where you're living, what are you doing, and you know. I mean, if you if you are working in like a, in the in the university level, you know, you're gonna find a lot of people are professor or are Jewish, or if you want, you know, in the TV or in the arts, you know. So, all depends well. So to that point, um, Eileen made a a great comment, um, referring to um, a comment you made earlier that the wealthy, professional, um, suburban Paris Jewish community that you talked about, um, that neighborhood that was mostly Jewish, Mm -hmm. you said uh, you used the word that they were protected in mm-hmm. that um, community yeah. so what yeah. uh what ca- can you what kind of protected formal security well, or yeah. accepted unspoken mm. accepted yeah. by the right anti-semites mm. as french and not yeah. physically attacked you know uh, how exactly are they perceived yeah. i mean in 1980s i mean i can tell you in 1980s when when i was there was a really like attempt physical attempt or if it is attempt today on the neighborhood they would put the police around right but most of the time it's a way of like the community being so strong they will have some stronger security but entirely they're not gonna have private people doing this uh, it will be protected just by itself, like the same years. And when you live in a good neighborhood, there is less problem than you live in a bad neighborhood. So in like an insulated community where they... No, insulated, but they live their life like anybody else. You know, I mean, I tell you, and I take the example of my family. I have two nephews who are very... I mean, they are very famous people. We've been lucky enough. I have two nephews who are very famous, a very famous writer and a casting director. And I mean, along my life, looking at they are like in their thirties and their family and everything else, I rarely hear them talking about things happen to them directly and directly all the time, you know, come out, but directly very little on, I'm talking about strict violence, you know, violence against someone or like somebody you're taking the keeper out of the head of someone or everything else. So uh, there is a sense too of certain part of the community is very, very well integrated for generations. So uh, it's it's hard to say that a neighborhood is gonna have protection of the people who are private people who are gonna protect them. It's not, it's not happening. Unless you are, unless, the only thing that I can see can happen if you are near an Arab neighborhood where there is animosity and a lot of violence by itself, then it can, you know, but um, not on a regular basis. Of course, when you have an, an incident happening, like something happened to, uh, right. because it happened, you know, we happened in Nice, it happened everywhere, then they reinforce like the cops. But in a good neighborhood, most of the time, especially in a big city, no. No, no, So um, another question um, coming in. Can is there a Jewish population currently that is is leaving France, choosing mm-hmm. to leave? Um, yeah. Is there a conversation about? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. there is. Uh, there has been, you know, like since 2014-15, a good number of people leaving. But remember, there is. I, I want. To, uh, just really separate the Jewish population in two different ways. There is okay. a more secular, more secular people, well inscribed, well educated, feeling that France is their country. A little bit like Dreyfus felt, you know, so like the same idea. They felt France is their country before to be Jewish. They are very okay. connected to France and they okay. have not so much tied to Israel. They are like very, they go, but they have some They're family. French they and they are Jewish. And they are Jewish, but different. I think that a lot of them too are French first. Yeah. It, it would be interesting to see. I mean, I know because of people around me. On the other side, so this is a part of the of the well-integrated Jewish you know, population. On the other part, you have people who are more religious, who have more connection with Israel, who have been here for a long time and feel that they are not feeling good. And one of their view, uh, it could be here, you know, in a, in a Jewish neighborhood, it's to go to Israel. A lot of these people are, went. I'm not saying the secular didn't go, but most of the people who left France, it's because 
they could not take the idea of what was going on, and they had a structure in Israel. For the people who know Israel, Israel is not such an easy country to integrate, even if you are Jewish. So if you don't have any family, you're going to think twice about it. But if you have family, and if you come from a place where you have ankle, and then you are a little bit more religious, and you are more connected for generations, you have been going there, and your parents talk to you all the time about that, it will be an easy go. But it's not somebody like me or my family who are very inscribed and more integrated somehow, who is gonna take their luggage and go to Israel, unless it's the Holocaust. That's another story, but I'm not, we're not gonna go because we don't have anyone there. The Algerian, right. Jews, Algerian Jews went to France and went to Canada because they had the French citizenship and they were speaking French. The Moroccan Jews went to Israel. So a big part right. of the Moroccan Jews went to Israel and oh. some part of them went to Canada and went to France. So they had my friend, I have a good friend who are from Morocco, they have a ton of family in Israel. So they used to go all the summer and they are connected to Israel the same way that they are connected to France. And they have a different vision, different vision. As us, my parents barely knew where Israel was. My parents, when they came, they were 42 years old from mm -hmm. Algeria. They were thinking about surviving. They say, we're going to survive. I'm going to find a job. I'm going to feed my family. They never have this idea of like where Israel was. When I grew up, I, I was the first one in the family in France saying, well, I'm sure Israel must mean something. And then I went and every, everyone after went to visit, but we had no connection with what Israel was. So just to show you, it's a it's lot of different things, you know, happening, you know. And of course, it, I mean, I say all the time, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, complex. Complex. It's complicated and it cannot be generalized. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> uh, and, and believe me, I do not re-question that anti-Semitism is grounded and grounded in everywhere you turn your head, always. And all these people are there and they are, but soon that you touch it, it comes out. So it's it's under. And even around here, you know, sometimes you have- like So a, to your uh, point about different geographic um, mm -hmm. areas making mm -hmm. a difference as well, um, Ruth writes that the New Jersey Commission on yeah, Holocaust right. Education was founded right. in South Jersey sure. by right. land by Holocaust survivors. And yeah. I agree, Roth, Roth, yeah. uh, Ruth, that yeah. South Jersey is like another country. So yeah. it's so interesting, yeah. but the survivors there yeah. knew that it, that was critical yeah. and yeah. Um, to happen yeah. right there yeah. at that yeah. time. And this, uh, they are great. Holocaust Commission is great. I took a lot of classes with them on it. They are really fantastic. And they, they will help in some things that they do is great. You know, I mean, I do like a lot of teaching of Holocaust in my classes through different level. And, uh, uh, they will just uh, get some money and invite each other to go to Israel and to go to Poland and to see the camp. Mm -hmm. This is what the work has to be done to really change the way of our world can be. Uh, I'm going to talk really like a teacher, but it's where it is. It's where it is. You can, yeah. if you just teach this at the bottom or even as a teaching level, we're going to bring it and the Holocaust Commission does this and it does an extraordinary job, you know, so, I mean, I think in France they should do more too, you know, I mean, everywhere they should do more, you know, so, you know but, you know, it's not so easy to convince people uh, that 500,000 people in a, in a country deserve something a little bit better. Um, many more questions coming in, but first, can you speak a little bit? I had the same question um, mm -hmm. about your name, Amselem. Yeah, I'm going to tell um, you about it's not a you mm -hmm. know a common mm -hmm. American no, Jewish no, name. No, no, so no. Um, Eileen uh, yeah. writes that it yeah. sound, even sounds a little Arabic. Sure, sure. So I'm going to tell you tell, about it. I, tell I, us have, about uh, it. I am somebody you know. Obviously, as I'm a teacher, I am a very interesting with everything that I can dig into. I dig into. So when I was 18 or 19 years old, I went to Israel because I see Israel, it's a place where certain I'm coming from. First thing I went, I went to the Museum of the Diaspora. I don't know if you uh -huh. know the, the Museum of the Diaspora. And I, yeah, make, sure. and, I, and I make research on my name. I say, what is Amsterdam coming from? So I'm going to tell you very briefly, I'm trying to be brief. Okay. When the Jews were pushed out from Morocco, from, uh, from Spain during the Inquisition, 49th. Okay. They were pushed, you know, they were killed or they were living. So they went to Morocco. My family 
went to Morocco. I mean, certainly we're seeing like 1492 uh, around that area. And we say there is two possibilities with this name. First, that there is a town, a town near Rabat, who is on the north of Morocco, who is called Rata Salem. So they yeah. think that they took this name from this town, but it's yeah. not the most plausible. The most interesting theory that they wanted a name who sound like Arabic to be hidden in their identity, but to be recognized by Jews. So listen, it's so fascinating. So if you take my name and if you write Absalem in my name, so Aleph, Mem, Samer, Lamed, and Mem Faro, it is Am Shalom or Am Shalem, who means wow. of the peace or united people. I was like, when I heard this, I said, my God, how did they go? And it what happened. So they have a, a, an Arabic sound. It sounds completely Arabic. You know, yes. I'm Salem, I'm Salem. And there is tone of them, tone. There is a lot in Canada. There is a lot in France. There is a lot in, uh, in Israel. And it's based on this. It's based on the meaning under a sound to add yourself. And my family, after this, went from Morocco to Algeria, we think in the 16th century, and they established there for 300 years. Wow. So it's a long, long history, but I was all the time fascinated by that, you know, by uh, how, how I did. My mother used to say, you came from Morocco and here you are in the US, how is it possible? So this is a <laughs> Jews, this is a Jewish story. It's a long Jewish story. Fascinating. We wander. Yeah. Oh, Good yeah. question, yeah. Eileen, thank you. Yeah. So um, is there um, an institution in, um, I think, Abby, you mean in, in France, um, mm -hmm. bridging um, in, to help the community bridge the gap through outreach between the Jewish and Arabs uh, community? You know, uh, and this, again, it's a political thing. You know, most of the time, the people who are in the left and more liberal believe that there is a possible of connection. The left, you know, like the more progressive people believe, you know, like even in Israel, believe that, you know, we can live together in peace. So there is some uh, more left uh, organization who, who are more, uh, you know, liberal who try to do this in the poor neighborhood. But it's difficult because there is so much hate and so much resentment from the Arab community. The Arab community has... They, they have a huge issue. It's really very difficult for them to integrate because they are pushed. And this look at the Jews being so well integrated. So there is a lot of you know, animosity against that. But of course there is, there is always, there has been always like a left part of the political spectrum who is trying, but left, not extreme left. Extreme left are often anti-Semitic too because they are against Israel. So you talk, it's very complicated. You have the extreme right, you have the extreme left, you have the center, you have the Republican, and you have the left who is really much more, uh, you know, kind of liberal, but much more open-minded. So mm -hmm. wherever you knock at the door, you see different ideas and different stories, but often the Jews are often connected with Israel. And for the Arabs, that makes a lot of sense, you know, because, uh, you know, they think that they, they stole the land, you know? Um. Right. Ruth um, makes um, an excellent point, bringing it um, a comparison to the film, which I think mm. translates to all of our um, countries. In the film, Simon had married a Catholic woman and didn't practice mm. Judaism as mm. his brother David did. Mm. He and his wife were both highly educated and religion seemed to mean so little to them until it didn't. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I think that's reflective yeah. of, of yeah. many societies. Yeah, many societies. You know, like uh, the, the rate of, uh, you know, integration to and forgetting about your Judaism is really, very, very strong. You know, I mean, that's, uh, even in France, I think a lot of, uh, of uh, people, unless they are religious and they kept themselves together, um, a lot of people I know, even from my friends, you know, married or lived with non-Jewish people and had kids mm -hmm. with them. And, uh, you know, so a lot. Who is, like you say, and it, it, it was, and it will always be, uh, you know, maybe a plus of integration, but backfire on you. For, of course, it can backfire on any time. You know, I'm not saying that it's, 
There is no perfect situation. The, city, the problem with, I think, the Jewish community is that they're not really tight enough. They're not structured enough. And Jews, uh, it's important for them to be in community. Very important. To raise so, their children no. and everything else. So. Right. Exactly. Um, Carol, uh, thank you so much for asking this question. Karen, this one's for you. Did anyone see the play recently produced by Manhattan Theater Club called Prayer for the French yeah. Republic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The subject was basically about anti-Semitism experienced yeah. by a Jewish family living in a good neighborhood of Paris. Yeah. It was ex um, exploring just exactly what you are discussing. Are you familiar with that show at all? I, yeah, I know so, it's so, limited. So. I, I have a good, I mean, a good friend of mine told me, you got to go see it because he said, whatever you talk Closing about soon. in Paris, they say, you got to, yeah, I know three or four days, but you know, I did sometime with that, but I would love to go see it, you know, so I, I might do this, you know, but I know they had a lot of great things to say about it. And they say it was very kind of exploring all these different aspects and very rich, very rich. You know, so, you know, I mean, these things can help too, you know, but again, it's, you know, it's New York City, it's a place where people are really exposed to this kind of thing. This right. kind of things needs to be going somewhere where people don't know, of people who are not really open to that. That's a difficult part. Because like you were saying in South Jersey, South Jersey is another, another world, you know, I mean, right. it's, and it's not too far away. Or even if you go and if you drive uh, towards Pennsylvania and you were to the West. I mean, one of my friends, I was looking for a house. He said, you're not gonna live there. You know, the guy who lives near me has this big white truck saying, you know, white lives matter, you know, things like this. You know, these people, a lot of people are very, very right and very conservative. And I went to Maine too. I spent two weeks in Maine this summer. Mm -hmm. It was like another world. It was another world. It was like <laughs> these guys with huge truck and super conservative, they scared me. <laughs> but this is the other part of the world, you know, that we don't, we don't know. So. Well, um, I think that part of what we can do to combat anti-Semitism is exactly what you're saying, educate. And um, one important way to do that is to have conversations like this. Yeah. Um, they're critical in educating and giving people a platform to have dialogue and express opinions. Yeah. And um, we learned so much from you tonight. Oh, um, you. So grateful for your time and your expertise and your um, stories. Yeah, yeah, and nice stories. <laughs> yeah. uh, this should be just the beginning of yeah. many more conversations that are needed. Yeah. Um, to continue to educate us and, and propel us yeah. forward, yeah. not yeah. backward. And uh, like you say, you know, whenever you start to know somebody from another background, wherever it is, it's a solution to war, it's a solution to a better world, it's a solution to everything. Soon that we connect human to human, we get to a better world. But this right. human to human, you have to dig and you have to take out all this negative out of it. It means all this prejudice, all this vision, and get to the core of everything. As there is a, actually a great, great uh, you know, organization in Israel who took uh, some Jewish kids in very early and seven, eight years old, and they put them in camp with Arab kids over years, years after years, and they built the bond. You have, yes. you have to go through this. We cannot, yes. cannot go over uh, we things We have to so do easy. the work. We have to do the work. And education is a work. For me, education is everything because if you do that, you build, you ground some things that is there into, into the child who's going to become a, you know, an active adult in society. You know, so. Well, as you can um, all attest, uh, film and art are Gerard's yeah. passion and expertise. Yeah. Um, I, we thank you so much for being with us tonight to for this conversation, yeah. for uh, yeah. more information on um, film classes, you can visit newwaveproductions.org. Right. You and can contact me too, you know, I mean, if you need anything you can, you can help with, you know, I'm more than happy, you know. So. Well, we will be seeing you again. We'll take you up on that. Okay. All thank right. you so much. Thank and thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have everyone. a wonderful evening.